Okay, thanks. Clear. We're clear. Um, I saw them like Brad and Elvis just sprinting across the street and they're doing some kind of press Okay. Do you want to go listen to that? Yeah. And then office through the Carville Police Department. Um, our mayor, our board of aldermen, uh, I'll be speaking on their behalf. Um, we don't want to confuse and I definitely don't want to create any additional fear in the community. Right now, there are no known additional threats to the community. Right now, we're working a crime scene, very significant one, several, you know, tens of thousands of square feet crime scene. I'm very thankful. Today, there was a, a lot of good things that came that I really believe prevented uh, this tragedy from being much worse. And I don't want to take away from what's occurred. Um, my thoughts and prayers, and I hope yours are too, are going to be with the victims, everybody that's impacted. A lot of people were impacted by this. So uh, I'm thankful. As you can see, there's uh, we have many partners that, are, that come to help us today, and I'm so thankful for them. Pretty much every city in this county, we've got the Memphis Police Department, Shelby County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, TBI, ATF, you name it, they came. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Uh, something else, I was talking to our team. One of the things that I saw as I entered that building today, um, the training that's gone on in this community and across this country uh, for years saved people's lives today. How many of you have heard of Run, Hide, Fight? That's exactly what those people today did. Uh, we had 44 employees that were inside at the time this started, and uh, we've accounted for, for everyone. Now, we still have the same number of victims as we did at the previous one. With the addition of one, we had one walk in to one of our local hospitals and it wasn't a shooting victim, it was uh, an anxiety attack. So this, is gonna, this, this situation is gonna drive fear, but we are a resilient community. And you know we're gonna do everything we can uh, to make sure that we keep Carryville and this area as safe as we can. And uh, I, right now I'm gonna ask a special agent in charge of the local FBI, Doug Kornesky, if he would come and just give some brief comments. We also have Teresa Dickerson from Kroger, the public information officer, who's going to provide some information, and then we'll open it up for some quick questions. So, Doug, if you will. Thank you, Chief Lane. So, sir, could you say and spell your first last name? Please? Sure. Sorry. It's it's uh, Douglas Kornesky, uh, K-O-R-N-E-S-K-I. So uh, first, I just want to start by uh, expressing our condolences, and again, our, our prayers are with the community. Many of us live in this community, shop in this store, um, so we uh, d deeply feel the uh, the loss and and, uh, and emotions here today. Um, I want to mention that uh, the reason we're here, we're here supporting uh, Coleyville PD. Uh, I want to give kudos, absolute kudos, to the response of the police department, Shelby County Sheriff, the fire department. Uh, their rapid response here today was was definitely commendable. Uh, under the uh, authorities of the Investigative uh, Assistance for Violent Crimes Act of 2012, the FBI is allowed to provide at the request of local law enforcement uh, investigative assistance. So what we're doing here today, we've uh, deployed our evidence response team, uh, which has a lot of experience in processing these scenes. Um, they're here, they're inside the, uh, the store, they're processing uh, the evidence. Uh, additionally, we have our uh, victim specialists who uh, have come and uh, will be providing and have been providing assistance to the victims of the crime and then uh, we'll be assisting with other investigative uh, interviews and, and things of that nature. So um, it's a great team effort. Uh, it's just always um, you know, in the sight of tragedy. It's good to see the, um, you know, the Memphis and Collierville, uh, West Tennessee uh, law enforcement uh, communities pull together, as we always do when uh, tragedy strikes. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Teresa Dickerson, and I'm the Corporate Affairs Manager for Kroger Delta Division. I'd like to just say every Kroger associate here in this city, in the Mid-South, we stand with our team here at the Kyerville store. Actually, every associate throughout the country, we are praying for our associates here in Kyerville, and we're asking the community to please pray for us as we go through this difficult time. We're saddened and heartbroken by what happened here today. It is an emotional roller coaster, as you can imagine. 
And we, of course, have provided counseling for every associate who's here today. And we will continue to do that. We'll also close the store. It will remain closed until further notice. Again, this is a tragic incident, and we are saddened by it. Please pray for our family, our Kroger family, the family of the victims. And we're asking today that you will, for the integrity of this investigation, please direct all questions to the Kyreville Police Department. And we just want to say thank you to the police department, to the first responders who were rushing in as people were rushing out. If you can imagine that, then you also pray for our first responders who came out today to help us during this tragic incident. Thank you. Ma'am, very little right now. He is uh, he's deceased. Um, we're still continuing the investigation. It's ongoing. There's uh, search warrants that are going to be carried out uh, shortly uh, at different locations or at one in particular. Can't give that out, so I know that's the next question. Um, but we're going to carry this thing as far as we can to see and make sure that there's no one else involved. Chief, did you talk about the, the, the truck in front of the store and your bomb unit has been there? As a matter of fact, I think they're right, right. Did you talk about what you're looking for? Well, that's pretty standard in these types of situations. We want to check and make sure, you know, we know from our past uh, experience, or I, I, I say past experience, my past knowledge of these incidents around the country, there have been times where there have been booby traps and things like that that's been associated with these. So it's out of abundance of caution. Uh, we have the resources here. We have some of the finest specialized resources in this part of the country, and they've been here for a long time uh, preparing for terrorist-type attacks. Uh, this, in this case, it's uh, it, we don't believe that's involved here, uh, but it's early in the investigation and we're continuing on. But it's, it's uh, just making sure that any contact uh, that we keep this community safe. Chief, what, what, what about this trip? Victims? How many were customers? How many were employees? Uh, I don't have that information right now. We'll try to get that for you uh, tomorrow. Do you know their status? Do you, Do you know their conditions? Right now, it's still the same. I know that we had one in surgery and uh, another in ICU. And uh, so y'all continue to pray. We don't want there to be any more loss of life. Chief, what about this trip? gunshots? Because there's a chance that you know, someone might have tripped, fell. Are they all I don't have any information to support that. Yes, sir, Brad. Chief, what about, what about the training that you all have dealt with in active shooting investigation? Without getting away specific tactics, but what helped your officers today uh, potentially have something worse happen? It, it hasn't been uh, three months. The Carville Police Department hosted a multi-agency active shooter training scenario with our law enforcement partners, fire, um, and I'm very thankful that we did. Um, it's a whole lot easier to go through. Uh, you make your mistakes there. Uh, today, what, what the result was, was victims were able to get medical treatment much faster because of the integration between police and fire. And our partners come in. Everyone knew. Uh, very proud of our police officers. Um, I think, and thank you for saying that, Teresa. You know, it's, it's one thing to see it on the news, but it's another thing when you're having to, to go in and know that there's a potential person um, armed on that other side and, and there was not one person that didn't. That that building was flooded with blue uniforms and I'm very thankful for them. That's part of the investigation. We're not going to get into that now. Ma'am? part of the investigation. So you're talking about the shooter? No, the, no, the I do not know. I don't have that I don't have that information. We'll try to get that for you before tomorrow. Were any officers in the county for the employees provide that number again? Forty four. Forty four. We don't have that information at this time. What we've done is we deployed multiple teams uh, not only searching the inside of the facility, but all the surrounding areas uh, to make sure that uh, we didn't have anybody that was injured that ran out. So we feel very confident that we've, we've everybody that was involved, that we have a good handle on that now. Chief, what are you looking for inside the store tonight and how long will this remain in place? Well, as long as it takes to get it done right. You know, that's the thing. We don't want to take a shortcut. Uh, so we're going to take our time. We've got very good partners that are here with us, and we're going to go through and make sure that we dot the I's and cross the T's. So I, I can't give you that. We know, we know a bomb squad was looking at a car. Can you say what was discovered or not discovered? 
Nothing's been discovered at this point. Ma'am, can't I can't comment on that right now. No, there. As far as we know, there wasn't any other incident that led up to this at this at this point. Were any officers hurt? No officers were hurt. Chief Lane, what's next for the emotional toll that's taken on your officers? It's not every day a police department deals with an active shooting. How's your department doing? What's next for for you all after this afternoon? Right now, our our, our primary concern was scene stabilization and making sure that we get the victims, the, the medical help, but there will be a time where we'll do critical stress debriefings with our officers. Uh, there'll be officers that involved in similar situations come from across the state that we'll, we'll talk about it. And uh, we'll, so what did we do right? Is there things that we can do better and those kinds of things? I don't know if you noticed, but we had chaplains here. Uh, we graduated nine chaplains um, two weeks ago, uh, and they were, we had uh, three chaplains on the scene here offering their services. I'm very thankful. Um, that they were here. Can you say what type of weapon was used? Nope. Can you say how many? No, oh, ma'am. That's part of the investigation. So, what we don't want to do is I, I know you want that information and we want to give it to you. We're not, uh, what we have to make sure is that there's no one else involved in this. And, and the more information we release, the more we compromise potential investigation going forward. So, we're going to get you the information eventually. But right now, uh, please bear with me. Do you have a time? I'm not sure. That, you want to answer that Ms. question? Dickerson, did, did the program have security at the time? Um, so we'll give you that information okay. um, as soon as it's available. I'll, I'll get with him and he can uh, provide another update. Chief, was there a time when you thought there was a second shooter? There, we, we have to go into it anticipating that that's the potential for it. Um, but there was no credible evidence that there was a second shooter. Most of our uh, firsthand witnesses pointed to one. Um, I know there was some reports that I think we talked about in the first briefing where there was an individual on the roof. I can personally tell you that was a Kroger employee because I was part of getting him off. So uh, that was definitely a Kroger employee. Chief, I know you've had this has been asked, but I'm getting a lot of questions from the report on the other side of the checking of that vehicle. Something was removed. Was there any other updates about what's happening? It's not clear yet. Well, we're not going to release what's what's been removed from that vehicle, okay? If there's something, I wasn't aware of that. Um, I'm sure there's somebody that's got eyes on it. I'm, you know, I'm kind of staying back, and we're trying to let let our professionals do their job. So, um, but two more questions. Can you go through the timeline or the time, Okay, uh, we told you at the at the last briefing that the first call came out at 1:30. Um, the first car that the dispatch has on the scene is four minutes later. I have since found out that as that call was going out, Carville PD did have a car that was on the scene. So our response was almost immediate. Some people don't get on the radio. You know, it's a high stress situation and they've been trained. You go towards the threat and that's what they were doing. Any children? Not that I've been told at this point. Uh, probably not tonight. If we get uh, any significant developments through the ongoing investigation, uh, Major David Townsend will reach out to you guys and we'll we'll uh, organize a press conference. If not, we'll have one sometime early in the morning to brief everybody up. Okay. Anything else? All right.